All righty, Friday night. Jack, what's up, man? How we doing? Doing good. How about you? Uh, well, as of we're recording, we're up 3 nothing. Orioles are on the verge of uh, pulling. Yeah, they're just on the verge of being up 3 nothing right now. We'll just leave it at that and speak that into existence for tonight. Um, we got to make some money this weekend. I've talked about it all week. I'm sick of talking about it. Yesterday wasn't the greatest start in the world. You were right just talking about it for a few minutes beforehand. It's like... Sometimes when you're right and then you add a couple bets at the end and you're like, God damn it, if I just I knew the Jets are gonna win the game, just leave it with the Jets. And in my case, um, yeah, somehow I thought it'd be fun to bet against Aaron Rodgers. He looked really good last night. I mean, they did a great job on the uh, broadcast of showing how he was using his eyes. Did you watch most of the game last night? Yeah, yeah, I did. And I mean their scheme was great. He was getting the ball out fast and they were protecting him really well. I mean, they looked like a well oiled machine out there. Yeah, I didn't think it was necessarily a reflection on how bad New England. They just didn't have the ball. So Stevenson couldn't get there. Uh, your boy Henry caught the first two. And then their offensive line was bad yesterday for New England. So just a, a whole bunch of crap. And tonight, I already put the bets out. You got the over in Stanford and Syracuse. And then yeah. you got Nebraska. That line jumped up. You got it at seven. I know you paid some juice for it. Is Illinois just not a good team? Because obviously they're 24th, Nebraska's 22nd. What was the thoughts there? No, they got they got Altmeyer. Nebraska is, and I can speak from experience, a very difficult place to play. And they're in a great spot as a program right now. They're not they're not getting these stupid penalties that they've gotten over the past five years. They're playing disciplined, good Nebraska smash mouth football, and they have a quarterback that can throw it. So confident in them at home more so than like not confident in Illinois. Illinois is a good team. They'll be a bowl team this year. So last week you went to the Colorado State game. Do I have the correct analysis? Um, we'll start there because I, I need you to help me with Baylor. But Colorado State, they kind of gave the game away with all those penalties, right? Like, did you come away from that game thinking if they play 100 times, Colorado's going to beat them 95 times? Or did you think it was more like, oh, you did, really? Yeah, CSU did not look good. They couldn't move the ball. Throws were inaccurate. I mean, they're running the ball. Like, I mean, CU – like to their credit, they played a lot more disciplined game than they did last year in the same the same Rocky Mountain showdown. They were completely undisciplined. Mm -hmm. CSU was just as undisciplined as they were last year. A bunch of stupid penalties, but they couldn't move the ball. So I mean that's problem A if I'm uh, if I'm Adazio, the CSU coach. I gotta get rid of it. I mean, he is the I don't like Dion's the one quote that he had after the game that is accurate if you're allowing it then he might not be coaching it, but if you're allowed, whatever the quote is. But yeah. 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 And yeah, they're just making stupid penalties. I just felt like they made it too easy for Colorado. So start with that game. I know it's not the marquee game, but it's an eight o'clock game uh, tomorrow night. Baylor's at Colorado. Baylor is eh. I've talked about it, um, you know, yesterday with J Mart. I know they, they don't have quite the talent that they used to have. What, what's your analysis of this game? Because I know you're plugged in with Colorado. Yeah, yeah, I'll be on the buffs. Um, I like him. Uh, I think Baylor, um, Daquan Finn was supposed to be the starter. I haven't paid much attention. I know he's not playing tomorrow. Not sure if it's a season-ending injury or if he got benched. Pretty sure it's an injury, though. He was supposed to be a stud, and he's not playing. And he, to my preseason analysis, he was their team. And I don't, I just don't think that they can keep up See you like obviously coming off a good win. I feel like they have a little bit more confidence now. That win against CSU was able; they were able to go into Fort Collins and win. And I think that's a confidence builder more than like a cockiness builder, if that makes sense. What are some games? Yeah, that does make sense. I'm not. I definitely won't take Colorado, but now you're making me not want to take Baylor. So maybe I need to hear that. Um, all right. So my analysis of you, and then I'm just curious on your analysis of yourself when it comes to college football is. You obviously are informed. You know what's going on. Is it early in the season and you find yourself making a lot of bets? Or, frankly, there's or, – or is it more like, hey, if you were betting 20 games, your record would be better? Because I would lean that way for you. Like, it makes me – I feel like you have an opinion on all these games. Do you find that when you're trying to narrow it down to the five or six, that part's being hard for you? Or what would you say – just the first, or just first couple of weeks, ball hasn't bounced your way. What would be your analysis of yourself here? Yeah, um, definitely some some oversights. Um, this will come out tomorrow, but uh, SMU was a complete wrong read on my end. I will be fading them tomorrow, and I took them preseason their win total over. But that was a that was a complete wrong read. Um, on the flip side, Oklahoma State doubling down. 
love Oklahoma State tomorrow. I took them to win the Big 12. I think they win. They play Utah at home. Oh, that's – I okay, so that's the marquee game. That's a 4 o'clock game, right? Uh, yes, if I'm correct. Let, let's stop there for a second because I think most people, um, most analysis I've seen, at least just where I'm looking, Utah is more popular to take. But you like Oklahoma State. You did like them for the season. You got really good odds. Let, let's um, – I didn't mean to cut you off there, but – in the uh, way to make some people some money, let's talk about the Oklahoma State game for a second. Um, yeah. why, do like, why do you like Oklahoma State, and how did they match up against Utah? I mean, they're they're red hot right now. Best running back in the country, Ollie Gordon. Alan Bowman is lighting it up right now. Everything is going right for Mike Gundy out there in Stillwater. And Cam Rising is a giant question mark. I don't know if you noticed, the line actually shifted, and I didn't get this early enough. I would have taken it, but I didn't get it early enough. It was actually Utah minus 2.5, Utah minus 3. And then around Wednesday, it shifted to OK State minus two and a half, OK State minus three. Um, and that was because, I mean, I'm assuming because Rising's probably not going to play. Mm-hmm. I'm taking Oklahoma State outright, regardless of if he plays or not. So if that line shifts back, go get the money line at a good price. But I don't think he's going to play. And I think Oklahoma State wins either way. He's always hurt. Are we going to look back and say that he should have left? It? I don't know if he could. He couldn't have left after that bowl game a few years ago against Ohio State. Could he? Oh yeah, he totally could have. Yeah, I mean he's yeah he's got the eligibility. I mean this is his seventh year in school. Um, so he should have came out right. Like at this point, he's not. It's know. questionable. I mean he's a loyal guy. I will give him that. He's a loyal guy. So I don't blame him. But the injuries suck, especially last year. Got it. So Oklahoma State. All right. So keep going. Uh, finish your thought though. As you you have a few oversights. But you you feel good about Oklahoma State. Was there anything else that these first couple of weeks you, you've learned? Yeah, um, I feel like Notre Dame, right read, same thing. Um, thought they would have lost to AM, did not think they would lose to NIU, but puts us in the exact same spot that I thought we'd be in with uh, Notre Dame with a chance to cash that with one, one or two more losses. So love that. Um, I feel like my yes. reads overall has been have been pretty good. But your, your, your best your best game so far, I'm curious for your analysis this week because your best game so far was USC to beat LSU outright. At least that's my most memorable game of year so far. Now they're facing Michigan. Michigan makes the switch at quarterback. USC still touchdown favorite. What are we, what are we thinking here? I'm staying away. Um, that's a massive, massive stay away game for me. Because USC has the firepower, but it's the big house. Like this is a game on a neutral side. I'm taking USC minus seven, minus seven and a half, minus nine. But in the big house, so why did the big house not affect Texas? Is Texas that good? Like it just didn't bother? Yes. I think Texas is that good. Texas is, I think, accurately the number one team in the country currently. That could change next week, but currently they're the number one team in the country. Well, it's changed next week when your Bulldogs win by 17 in Alabama. Or Bama wins. Either way, whoever is wins that, that game that- will be the number one team in the country in, my, in my eyes. We'll talk about that a lot next week, but – um not good news for Alabama that Georgia barely beat Kentucky, right? Yes, I agree. No All right. lot poison. Norman, Oklahoma. Have you been there? I feel like you've been everywhere. You go. I game. have. Yes, I have, I enjoyed Oklahoma. I saw Rattler lead a lead a nice touchdown drive to barely beat Nebraska. <laughs> it was a couple I, of years ago. I got a terrible memory. Oh man, maybe you know the year because I was in Reno, Nevada. I want to say it was twenty. 15 or 2016 and i bet ohio state at oklahoma on the night game and baker was so good and oklahoma just came out and yeah i had no chance and then i think anyway so norman oklahoma that's the spot for i guess the biggest game the best game tennessee um that's the game that'll be get everybody's attention here tennessee's a seven point favorite Talk to me here. What, what should we expect? Tennessee is going to go no huddle. I'm excited to watch it. Will it work against Oklahoma's defense? Yeah. So um, to my knowledge, OU has been banged up on the O-line. think they're getting some guys back. I will double check that tonight. I'm currently on OU plus seven and a half. But, I mean, that does make a bit of a difference. Tennessee has one of the best pass rushers in the country. Um, and their whole – like their front seven is just very solid. And so if OU is banged up and they've got two guys that are starters that aren't playing – Probably going to stay away, but currently at OU plus seven and a half right there. The main reason is Tennessee is very overvalued in my eyes. This game was a pick em to start the season, and I don't think they've done enough to prove to me they should be seven-point favorites in Norman. 
And I mean, that's not a knock on Tennessee. It's just, I think the line adjustment was too much. What happened? So talk to me because the thing that, if you want to say the one thing that you were the most wrong about that, were you wrong or the game just get out of hand was the app state game. Cause we liked NC state before the season, they get smoked by Tennessee. Then all of a sudden Clemson beats the crap out of app state. Now NC state's going to Clemson, getting 20 and a half points. Are we going back to the well? There's no way Clemson's covering that. They don't cover 12 o'clock games at home anyway, right? <laughs> or is that yeah. just bad? Like what happened last week? Yeah, the App State ad was was a bad, bad addition. Um, I mean, I can't remember if that was last week or two weeks ago, but I mean, end of the day, that was a late bet, and I kind of was basing more of my information on, oh, maybe Clemson is just not as good as I thought, instead of seeing this as a massive bounce back opportunity. So should have stayed away there. North Carolina State, I would argue, is probably one of the two or three biggest, obviously behind Florida State, one of the two bi- two or three biggest disappointments this year. And so that kind of came out of nowhere. I mean, yeah, they hung with Tennessee in the first half, but then Tennessee kind of opened the floodgates, and that was the end of that. But I don't know. I will also be staying away from that game. I am not confident in really either of those two teams. So you're right. It was Clemson's last game, but it was two weeks ago. So they do have the bye week. Um, Maybe that's why, but just NC State, Clemson notoriously – um, it's not good at those home favorites at noon, just a weird environment. I think players are hung over. So, all yeah. right. Um, and 20 points is nothing to scoff at either. That's a, that's backdoor territory. If you're NC state real quick, cause I skipped over it. I was excited. I, I spent a few minutes on it, but you told me that you could explain this Tennessee. Um, okay. So it's like a surcharge. We all know what a surcharge is. We get like tax, basically like a tax fine. Great. We're used to it. Airports, hotels, Things happen all the time. We get billed for it. You're like, hey, where's an extra three dollars here, two dollars here? But Tennessee uh, football is going to do something a little different. So, can you explain this real quick? Yeah. So, pretty much what they're doing is Tennessee has sold out their stadium, their season tickets, for ever, really. And they kind of realize, oh, we have this 15,000 person waiting list for season tickets. We might as well monetize this at least for the players a little because then it puts less pressure on the NIL collectives and all these sponsors and boosters and stuff. And so basically what they're doing is they're charging a little bit extra for tickets and then like ensuring to their fans, all of this money is going directly to the players. And frankly, I don't see a problem with that. So it's going to be, so my ticket, so I go to the game, it's a hundred bucks. Instead, it's going to be like 103 bucks, 104 bucks, nothing crazy. Right? No more than that. I'd say, I think it's a 10% charge if I'm correct. 10 so be 110 Okay. Yeah, um, whatever. Not the craziest thing in the world. And that, that theoretically, that's going to the third string offensive guard to get him to or well, whatever, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, like a lot of these players sign bought based off of an assumed NIL deal or like this this amount, give or take. And so that's just an extra um extra boost for the program to get those numbers. And then when recruiting comes, you can also play off that a little bit to these recruits and say, well, we're the only team in the country. We're the team that started charging off of tickets, which we should have been doing 20 years ago. Fascinating. The the NIL stuff, we're going to do, I'm going to do a deeper dive into all of it. But yeah, I saw that Tennessee, excuse me, um, Tennessee got the headline for like, it comes off ridiculous, but like most things, when you think it through, it's like, all right. I mean, the world's just Actually changing. Makes sense. Yeah, that's yeah. that's who should be getting paid. And frankly, for the record, I'm going to say, I think a lot of other schools follow suit if and when this is implemented. Yeah, and it does it. It probably has to have some sort of congressional approval within the state. I don't yeah. know where- the governing body. I don't know who it is at this point, but some it has to be approved by someone. And once it does, I think a lot of other schools will follow suit. Yeah. All right, so how else can we make some money? I know you'll put out your picks. Um, it is Friday night. You still um, are you know, not officially on the record until tomorrow morning when we put it out. But for everybody listening, is there any other games that jump out that you want to spend a, a few minutes explaining why you like the side? Yeah, a couple others. Um, I'm going to fade Wyoming until they prove otherwise. So more Texas, minus seven and a half, eight. I can't remember what I got it at earlier this week, but that will be a pick. Wyoming might be the worst FBS team in the country this year. Their quarterback's a joke. So literally the only game I picked for the first week of the season was I was fading Arizona state partially because of you. We had a, whatever our conversation was for the year, like Arizona state sucks. I forgot to see if they won 
you know, yeah. if we had, if they're, if they want they're, they're tomorrow. So I, that's, that was another one I was going to touch on actually, but sure, more yeah. of the story, Wyoming is awful. And I mean, they lost outright to Idaho, the Idaho Vandals who are FCS team. They were eight point favorites and lost and um, lost, got blown out by Arizona state, blown out by BYU. And like, they're just not a good team. And North Texas is nothing to scoff at. Like they're good. They're coming back. Mean green. Yeah. The mean green. I, I, I'm taking them and I'm, it's going to be fade Wyoming until further notice. So that's one pick jumping back to Arizona state. Actually, they play Texas tech in Lubbock and I will be taking the red Raiders there minus two and a half. Um, Why did Texas tech get smoked? Who did they get smoked by Washington state? Right. Um, let me double check that for you. Yeah. Take it, take a look there. I know they're two and one. Um, I, I'm a fan of Texas Tech. They they have one of the best running backs in the country, Taj Brooks. They got a good quarterback in Morton. Um, and I think Arizona State, I think all of their victories are extremely overvalued. I think they're one of the most overvalued teams in the country right now. Um, win against Texas State, like a non-power four, non -power four yeah. team, which they were not favored to win, if I'm correct. Texas State was actually favored in that game, and I'm pretty sure Arizona State came back and won. So, yeah, so right on that account, Texas Tech didn't get smoked by Washington. They lost 37-16. That was two weeks ago. They beat North Texas last week. Washington State's a really hard place to play. It might be the hardest place to play when that stadium is really rolling. Mm -hmm. You get the vibes of the uh, Seahawks plus the crazy college crowd. Like, there's nothing going – you haven't been out there, have you? No, no a couple people that went to school in Pullman, though. Um, heard, heard great things. Never did make it out there, though, no. So Texas Tech over Arizona State, um, fading Wyoming. Anything else jumping out at you? No, uh, great game to watch. I would say I, I will be on the the side of the Horn Frogs here. Um, but SMU TCU, the battle of the Iron Skillet out there in Dallas. That's a great game against with two unranked teams. Going to be a great game. SMU high on early this year, but they haven't picked a quarterback, and that's never good. So. Um, I will be on the side of the Horn Frogs there. I like what Josh Hoover's doing. They sling the ball around the field. That'll be a phenomenal game to watch. Yeah, the rest of the slate from a, you know, just a ranked standpoint, not a lot of great games. Kansas State's going to BYU, another really tough place to play. You were right about BYU last week. Stay away game for you. Um, that's, that one's kind of on my list to do a little more research on tonight and tomorrow morning. Um, leaning BYU currently, again, I I'm impressed with them so far. Um, but we'll see Kansas state proved they were legit against Arizona last week. Mets, Diamondbacks, Braves, two of the three make the wild card. I'm giving, we'll give the Padres in there who gets left out Braves, Mets or Diamondbacks. Uh, I think the Braves are going to squeak in. Um, I, I think the Mets. I think the Mets get left out. Mets are playing hot. That's the, I was hoping that was the one you wouldn't say. I had a future bet. I got the Mets and the Giants to make the NL uh, playoffs. So, obviously, the Giants let me down. Um, that franchise was really screwed up. But I need the Mets. Orioles somehow have to win the division. I don't know if they're going to pull that off. Um, all right. We can do baseball another time. We'll do NFL. I, I want to do – we're still figuring it out just so everybody knows. You know, Jack, there's – do hours and hours and hours of content – Still trying to figure out what makes the most sense uh, as Jack started his new job. And I love talking college football because I always feel like I'm learning. You, you know a, a tremendous amount. So hopefully the bets will play out that way and back up your knowledge. Appreciate it. Is there, um, yeah, is there anything else or we'll just recap it all next week? Yeah, we'll recap it. Uh, calm before the storm week, I would say. Big week of college football next week. Obviously headlined by Georgia, Alabama. But there's a bunch of other good games I got circled. What's your favorite NFL game before I let you get that you're just looking forward to watching? I won't put you on the spot here for any bets yet, but is there a game that's catching yeah, your eye? I, the Eagles, I got circled. The Eagles are going to New Orleans, and I think that's a great spot for them. Obviously, New Orleans has lit it up the past couple weeks, but – Everybody's due for a letdown. They don't have the talent that Philly does. And so I probably will be on the, the Eagles outright. If I'm correct, they're about a plus 125 underdog. Yeah, there's a couple of these games where even teams, I was doing a little research. Do you remember the, uh, again, putting you on the spot that I, I said it the other day? I think I, I screwed it up by saying JP Lossman. It was Trent Edwards, uh, the Buffalo Bills quarterback in like 2009. The Bills were 4 0, they were 5 and 1, then finished 7 and 9. Josh McDaniels, Broncos. I know you remember that, unfortunately. Did they get the 6-0 or 7-0? Uh, 
Uh, I don't know. They were at least 6-0 that year uh, with Kyle Orton, and then they couldn't make the playoffs. They fell apart. So, yeah, that might that might have been Shanahan. I think McDaniels got fired his first year. That might have been with Shanahan. I'm almost positive that. All right, hold on. Let me. If I'm wrong, yeah, take wrong. a look here. I mean, I that's that's back when I was young. Really, I thought Josh McDaniels had one really good start to the year, but let me double check it while we're here. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of great. I mean, the the while I'm looking that up. Two cents on the Ravens Cowboys from a non Ravens uh, fan perspective. Should be a great game. Uh, that's all I got, honestly. Um, haven't dived into it much. Um, Cowboys obviously like struggled last week against the Saints, but uh, we'll see. I mean, should be a great game, honestly. The Bronco. You know what? I don't want to waste everybody's time. It, well, whoever's right is right, and I'm. Gonna, I'm not saying that because um, I think you're right. I just can't find it. I think it's the 2009. Well, about one, one second. 2009 Broncos. Yeah, the Broncos started 6-0, so I got the right team. Now we just got to figure out who the coach was in 2009. Yeah, it was Josh McDaniels. You're right. Yeah, I didn't I didn't realize that he, he actually played that well this year, that year. And then I think he got fired the year after. So everybody knows Jack is like an encyclopedia here. Um, when we first started. Oh, college more, uh, unfortunately. No, that's what I'm saying. For me to get a win, I got to take a win. I, I said JP Lawson on the pod the other day. I was like, I'm almost positive because McDaniels, uh, yeah, you're, fuck, you're, 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 well, you're a kid, I guess, right? I was in college. Yeah, I have six. I think I was six years old. So <laughs> that's good me for that one. <laughs> All right. Hope everybody makes some money one way or the other. I'll be here Sunday morning uh, giving all my thoughts. I'm going to win this week no matter what. <laughs> have to. Orioles got to win. All right. Have a good night, Jack. Appreciate you, man. Have a good night. Thank you for doing this. And um, I'll see you next week. Yeah. Sounds good.